قال الله رائحة أخي وابن أمي رسول الله وقلت الله ما ها هو ما وقع ما ولدي قطعت الكساء فأقبل علي وهو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله أتعذن لي أن أكون معكم تحت الكساء قال له عليك السلام يا أخي ويا وسيء وخليفتي وصاحب الوائي قد عزمت لك فدخل علي تحت الكساء ثم أتيت نحو الكساء وقلت السلام عليك يا أبتا يا رسول الله أتعذن لي أن أكون معكم تحت الكساء قال وعليك السلام يا بنتي ويا بلاتي قد عزلت لك فدخلت تحت الكساء فلما اكتمل جميعا تحت الكساء أخذ أبي رسول الله بطرف الكساء وأوما بيده ليمنع إلى السماء وقال اللهم إن هؤلاء على بيتي وخاصتي وهامتي لهمهم لهمي ودمهم دمي يؤلمني ما يؤلمهم ويحذرني ما يحذرهم أنا هرب لمن هاربهم وسلم لمن سالمهم وعدو لمن آدهم ومحب لمن أحبهم إنهم مني وأنا منهم فاجعل سلواتك وبركاتك ورحمتك وغفرانك ورضوانك علي وعليهم وأذهب عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد فقال الله عز وجل يا ملائكتي ويا سكان سماوتي إني ما خلقت السماء مبنية ولا عرضا مدهية ولا كمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مذية ولا فلكا يدور ولا بحرا يجري ولا فلكا يسري إلا في محبة هؤلاء الخمسة الذين هم تات الكساء فقال الأمين جبرائيل يا رب ومن تات الكساء فقال عز وجل هم أهل بيت النبوة ومعدن الرسالة هم فاطمة وأبوها وبعلها وبنوها فقال جبرائيل يا رب أتاذن لي أن أحبط إلى الأرض ليكون معهم صادسا فقال الله نعم قد عدمت لك فحبت الأمين جبرائيل وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله العلي الأعلى يكرهك السلام ويخصك بالتهية والإكرام ويقول لك وعزتي وجلالي 
inni ma khalattu sama amma bniyata wala arzam madhiyata wala kamaram munira wala shamsam mudiyata wala falakan yaduru wala baharan yajri wala fulkan yasri illa yajliku wa mahabbatukum wa qad adna liyan adkhul maakum fa hal ta'zanu li ya rasulullah fa qala rasulullah wa alayka assalam ya amin wa hayyillah innahu nam kada din to lak fada khala jabrail ma na ta tal kisa fa qala li abi in allahu hakad aw ha ilaykum yaqulu inna ma yurid allah al yuzhiba ankum rijsa ahl al bayt wa yutahirakum ஜலூசினோ
Dearest of brothers and sisters, in the previous nights we would start from the we started a series of lectures on the topic of Aqait. And we would go to Aqait and then we would dedicate some of our time in the history of the events, to the history of the events that uh, are taking place in the events of Karbala and the events that prior that taking place prior to that. Tonight because there's only a couple of nights left and our time is limited. Tonight we'll start from looking into historical events. Tomorrow is day of Tasua. Day after tomorrow is day of Ashura. We'll be commemorating day of Ashura, so we have left only two nights. So we'll look into historical events, the first. Then if time left, we'll look into different things as well. So as we know, the army or the group of Imam Hussein, Imam Hussein with a group of poets, Imam Hussein and his son, with a group of the followers, they have reached a place on the banks of the river of Eurat, Euphrates, and there they stationed. And the events that I'm going to describe now has taken place starting the, from the third day of Muharram. Umar ibn Sa'ad, Abi Waqqas, arrived from Kufa with 4,000 soldiers. Who was in Umar ibn Sa'ad, Abu Waqqas, Umar ibn Sa'ad, he was the head of the army that was sent after Imam Sayyid So he arrived with his army of 4,000 soldiers. And this is a minimum account. Some historians said that there was 12,000 of them. I think Sheikh Mufid. And some historians now escaped in uh, who, who, who was that. They say there's a count even saying that there was up to 30,000 of them, immaterial. Anyway, at the very least, 4,000. Cavalry of soldiers had originally been dispatched by Ubaidullah bin Ziyad to subdue, to subdue the people of Dailam in Dastaba. So they, said they were sent to somewhere else to subdue the people. Who is Ubaidullah bin Ziyad? Ubaidullah bin Ziyad is a governor of Kufa with an extended uh, responsibility and governorship of Iraq and even Iran at the time. He was the boss. And he was reporting to Yazid ibn Muawiyah at the time. Yazid ibn Muawiyah was supposedly, he was Khalifa to Islam. But he was the head of the Islamic world. By then, Ibn Ziyad had appointed Umar ibn Sa'd as a governor of Ray. Where is Ray? Ray is where Tehran is now. So he told him that, I give you Ray. Well done, good job, I give you Ray. And then, he was on his way to Ray, and he sends him letter about the, when he got this predicament of Hussein, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. He got an order from Yazid to sort out Hussein a.s. And then he sends the letter to, uh, to Omar ibn Sa'd saying that, look, stop your movement to Rai, return back to the place the near this village, village of Aqar, and uh, go towards Hussein. When you complete this task, return back to your governor, which is Rai, which is Tehran, current Tehran and its surroundings. Umar ibn, Umar, Umar ibn Sa'd petitioned, he wrote back to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, if you can relieve me of this mission, please, he say, then do so. <coughs> May God have mercy on you. Ubaidullah replied to him, yes, no problem. If you hand over to us our government of Ray, because he wrote him a paper saying, I appoint you as a governor of Ray. He said, please, let me not go for a saying. Say, okay, that's okay. But return me back the mandate that I have given you, appointing you governor of Ray. Ibn Sa'd requested a day to reflect on this matter. Ibn Sa'd Ibn Sa'd left to seek the counsel and advice of his sincere friends. Everyone advised him not to undertake this mission, mission of going against Imam Hussein 
Hamza ibn Mughayra, who was his sister's son, his nephew, said to him, O oh, uncle, I implore you in the name of Allah to desist from moving against Hussein, for it will constitute a great sin in the sight of your Lord and violate the bond of kinship. By this gesture, Hisham, Hisham sorry, yeah, sorry, it's jumping up and down, my apologies, technical problems, just a second. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Yeah. Sorry, my apologies again. Oops, I'm lost now completely. Yeah. Hisham Council advised Lord violated by Hisham report that he went to see Umar ibn Sa'd after the latter had been instructed to march against Hussein. Ibn Sa'd said to him, the governor had ordered me to go, to go out against Hussein and I refused to do so. Hisham said to him, may God guide you to do what is proper and right. Do not undertake this mission of combat against Hussein. Then he left him. Someone came to Hisham and informed him, this Umar ibn Sa'd is inciting people against Hussein. He went to Umar ibn Sa'd and found him seated. When the latter was saw Hisham, when Umar ibn Sa'd saw Hisham, he turned his way away from him. He turned not to see him. By this gesture, Hisham realized that he had decided to march, to march on the Hussein. And Hussein and left him. Umar ibn Sa'd went to Ibn Ziyad and said, May God make you prosperous. You have entrusted me with the governorship of Rain and the mission against Hussein. People have heard about my appointment. If you consider me suitable for this post, then to do so. Otherwise, dispatch an army of the eminent leaders of Kufa with this army. I am not the best candidate to fight on your behalf. Thereupon, he proposed some names. So what he's doing, he's going back to obey the lines. He saying, look, listen, you want to give me this task to go there. In the same time, you appointed me governor of, of Ray. Let me go and take care of Ray, which is the Tehran and all this area. And here's the main guys in Kufa. Appoint one of them, and they will take this care of this matter, you know? rather than me. So he's trying to, he knows that it's a big sin, very bad thing he's going for. In the same time, he doesn't want to give up governorship because the guy is up on, my wife is telling him, okay, that's no problem, you don't have to go, but give up governorship of this, of the... If the Ziyad replied, do not try to teach me about the eminent leaders of Kufa. I'm not seeking your advice on who to send out. Either you set out against Hussein with your soldiers or, on, or hand over your governor. Nothing the insistence of Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, nothing the insistence of Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, he agreed to undertake, he agreed to undertake the mission with 4,000 soldiers. 
They arrived at Ninawa the next day, 3rd of Muharram. Now we are in the 3rd of Muharram. It has been said that there was a, this, this piece of poetry that he said, that, uh, Mulk al-Ray wa al-Ray Munyati, and there is uh, all the poem going after that. When he said that, can I, can I just give up the, this governorship of Ray that I have been offered? So he was, he had a dilemma here. He had a conundrum. On the one hand side, he has been appointed the governor of Tehran and all the areas, and that was considered the beautiful, beautiful area, all the green mountains, valleys, everything there, as opposed to the desert of Arabia. And he said, how can I give it up? In the same time, he doesn't want to see. So he's seeking the way out of that. In the same time, keeping the down on ship. And that's the boss of the army. Then they are right. And you know, the next day, third of Muharram now. Omar ibn Saad instructed the, instructed the guy whose name was Azhar bin Qais. Why I'm keeping these names and the dates and all that? I think it's important that we know, we know our history. We cannot really obtain this law of Imam Hussein unless we understand the events and go through the events and then memorize the events that happened there. He instructed Azhar be praised to go to Hussein and ask him about his purpose for coming here and his intention. Azra was one of those who had sent written invitation to Hussein and were those embarrassed to go to him. Other eminent leaders who had written to Hussein faced the same awkward situation, expressed displeasure and refused to meet Hussein. So we have a situation here where he arrives with the leaders of Kufa, and they before they written a letter to Imam Hussein and invited them, him, to come to Kufa and said, come, come, and we will make you the leader. And now they are coming to fight him. And here he is sending them to go to talk to him, and they are ashamed. Say, how can well, it's ashamed. They cannot go and talk to him. In the meantime, there was a guy whose name was Kathir, Kathir ibn Abdullah Shabi, a courageous, a courageous horseman who never shied away from anything. Said, I will go to him. By God, if you wish, I will kill him. Umar ibn Sa'd retorted, I do not want you to kill him. Just go and deliver my message. <coughs> yeah. Go and ask him why he came here. Go and ask Hussein why he came here. On this way towards Hussein, Kathir was spotted by Abu Tumama Saadi, who told Imam Hussein alayhi salam, May God make you prosperous, O Abu Abdullah, the most wicked person on earth who has spilled the blue blood and killed people is coming towards you. Abu Tumama approached him and said, Lay down your sword. The man replied, By God, no. There is no cause for that. I am only a messenger. If you listen to me, I will tell you what I have been asked to convey the message. If you refuse, I will go back. Abu Tumama said, I will... Abu Tumama said, I will grasp... I will grab the hilt of your sword and then you can convey the message. Just let me hold your sword because I'm afraid you will attack him. Let me just hold on this. I will convey your message. He replied, no, by God, no. You will not hold on it. Abu Tumama said, in that case, give me the message for Hussein and I will convey it to him on your behalf. I will not allow you to go near him for you are a treacherous man. They exchanged curses. They cursed each other. They had a verbal fight. Kathir returned to Omar ibn Sa'd and informed him of what has transpired. So look, I could, they wouldn't let me near him. Omar ibn Sa'd, after that, called out for Qurra, Qurra ibn Qais Hanzali, and said to him, Hello, hello, hey, be quiet. Okay, just put it down. Mordi! Shh! Don't let it sit down. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Say it. Stop talking now. Okay? 
Listen, do you understand what I mean? Okay, so listen. I'll ask you after that. Okay? Yeah. Umar ibn Saad called out for Qurrah bin Naqais Hanzali and told him, Shame on you, Qurra. Go to Hussein and ask him what has brought him here and what he wants. Qurra began to walk toward the camp of Hussein. When Hussein saw him approaching, he asked, Does anybody know this man? Habib ibn Muzayr replied, Yes, he is from Hanzala clan of Tamim, of Bani Tamim. And he is the son of our sister. I used to know him as a man of sound understanding and would not have imagined his presence on the other side. Ulrah entered and greeted Hussein. Salaamu alaykum, said, said alaykum salam. Then he conveyed Umar ibn Sa'd message to him. He said, look, Umar ibn Sa'd is asking, why did you come here? Hussein replied, the people of your town wrote to me invitations to come. If they are now averse to my presence, if they don't want me in here anymore, I'll leave them and go back. Urrah returned to Ibn Sa'd to inform him of this conversation. Ibn Sa'd said, I hope that God will exempt me from engaging him in battle or declare war on him. So in a sense, that was a good news. He eh? said, I Imam Hussein, why did you come? He said, look, you called me, I came. If you don't want me, I go back. So Ibn Sa'd suddenly is happy, saying, that, look, man is not seeking anything. He just came here. And what does he do, decide to do? He decide to write a letter back to Ibn Ziyad. In the letter to Ibn Ziyad, he writes, In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Tell us, what is it? Come here. Just tell us. What is it? He got my, my red sink. Give him that. Okay. Now, Omar ibn Sa'd is writing the letter back to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Look, look at the letters these guys are writing. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. They think, they think they are Muslims. They think they are on the right way. They think they are doing the right thing. When I reached Hussein, I sent my messenger to him and ask him what his purpose for coming here was and what he wanted. He responded, the people of this town wrote me, they wrote me the letters of invitation and their message came to me appealing to me to come. Therefore, I have come to them. Since they are displeased with my presence and hold to views that differ from what their messengers brought to me, I am prepared to go back. Ibn Ziyad of Umar, Ibn Ziyad, Ibn Ziyad wrote a letter back to him. This is, this is just a short distance. So they can travel back and forward very, very quickly in a few hours. A horseman can take a letter and then bring it back, respond. Ibn Ziyad wrote back to him saying, In the name of God and compassionate, the merciful, again with Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, and all the rules. I have received your letter and have understood the contrary. Offer Hussein, make an offer to Hussein. Over to Hussein and his followers the opportunity to pledge allegiance to Yazid ibn Muawiyah. So they come and say, okay, we are the followers of Yazid ibn Muawiyah. We accept his leadership, Islamic leadership of Yazid ibn Muawiyah. If they do so, we will determine our decree. Wassalamu alaikum. Upon reading the letter, Ibn Sa'd said, I had a feeling that Ibn Ziyad will not accept a conciliatory posture that Ibn Ziyad will not accept this outcome. He will insist on Imam Hussein 
accepting religion. And we know from the history that where the problem started, problem started when Imam Hussein was offered to officially to plead the allegiance to Yazid, officially announced that he is accepting the leadership of Yazid as a Khalifa of Islam. That's what he refused to do, and that's where the whole the story started. Imam Hussein and his followers, brothers and sisters, Imam Hussein and his followers were denied the water. How? By a letter that Ibn Ziyad sent. He sent another letter from Ubaidullah Ibn Ziyad. And this letter, he addressed this letter to Umar Ibn Sa'ad. Letter had following content. Prevent Hussein and his followers from reaching the water supply. They should not be allowed ever to taste a drop of it, as was done with the righteous, pious, and oppressed Khalif, Uthman ibn Affan. There's a bit of a history here, yeah? Because these are the followers of Ben Umayya. Whenever they started all this story, they always had to have an excuse from the beginning, Muawiyah <coughs> his excuse in starting the war against the Amir al muminin alayhi salam was the killing of Uthman, Khalif Uthman. Although they are all were involved <coughs> in the conspiring against the Khalif of Uthman at the time and killing him, that was a conspiracy. And Imam Ali salam, and his followers, Shia of Imam Ali salam, they did all the possible to prevent this killing. Nevertheless, Uthman was kill, killed in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a criminal way. Terrorists have killed him and used this excuse all the time to attack Ahlul Bayt. As if Ahlul Bayt were anyway involved. And look, it's still coming. At the time of Amir al muminin alayhi salam, that at the time of Imam Hassan alayhi salam, and here is the time of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and they are still using the same excuse to um, justify their crimes. Umar ibn Saad dispatched Amr ibn Hajjaj with 500 horsemen to be stationed along the river, that's enforcement, on the top of 4,000, that is the enforcement of 500 to station along the river in order to prevent Hussein and his followers from obtaining a drop of water. This was done three, year, three days before the battle against Hussein. So we are reaching now events of seventh day of Muharram. Just want to remind you, brothers and sisters, that Muslims from the time of Prophet ﷺ, they have never done that. They have never denied the enemy the water. They have always given them access of water. Even the, in the battle, of uh, that took place between Amir al muminin salam and Muawiyah. We know that historically, water was going back and forward between changing hands, and whatever, whenever it was in changing hands of Muawiyah and Bani Umayyah, they would deny the followers of Amir al muminin water. And whenever the wells were in the hand of Amir al muminin salam, he would grant them access to water. And he was asked, why would he give them water? They just denied that yesterday. And he would say, SubhanAllah, how could we do other? How could we do any other way? And this is another proof that Imam salam, always follows the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like Prophet, and acts upon the whatever is the right thing to do, no matter what's the outcome. As they say, you have heard the meaning, it's a, it's a right thing to do. So it doesn't matter what's the outcome, it's the right thing to do. Meeting of Ibn Sa'd with Hussein. Following, there was a meeting between Ibn Sa'd and Hussein. And now we will give an account of this meeting. Hussein said, Amr ibn Qaraza ibn Ka'ab Ansari to Omar ibn Sa'd to arrange for a meeting with him at night between two camps. So which night is it? Night going from 7th 
to age of Muharram, the last night. The last night. Umar ibn, Umar ibn Saad came out with about 20 horsemen and Hussein alayhi salam came with a similar number of about 20 horsemen. When they faced each other, Hussein alayhi salam instructed his followers to leave. He instructed his followers to withdraw, and so did Omar. So they had a conversation for greater part of the night, two of them. Together, they, they had a conversation. People speculated on what they had discussed. So nobody knows what was that. We don't have historical event of this conversation between Omar ibn Saad and Imam Hussein alayhi salam, which took place for the most part of the night of El Eight Muharram, which is the last, last night. They say that Hussein made the following proposal to Umar ibn Saad. He said, let us go to Yazid ibn Muawiyah and leave the two armies. He said, Omar, you and me, we'll go to Yazid ibn Muawiyah, two of us, and we leave the armies behind us. You don't say that I need to give, uh, to give my allegiance to him? So let us go together and we do that. Umar replied, no, then my house will be devastated. I don't do order, they devastate my house. Hussein said, I will reconstruct it for you. Umar ibn Saad said, no, then my properties will be confiscated. Hussein said, I will provide you with better properties in Hijaz. Hijaz is where? Around Mecca and Medina, this area where the Imam Hussein is originally from. Umar repeated he, this to him. He didn't accept. People speculated about the conversation and conjecture was, was right among them. Although no one had actually heard the conversation or knew of its contents. Yeah? There was a second letter at that time of Umar ibn Saad to Ibn Ziyad. So what he's trying to do, he's trying to avoid the battle with Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So he's writing another letter. God has wiped out mutual enmity. He has united us and reformed the affairs of our community. This Hussein alayhi salam has undertaken to return to where he came from. Or we can send him to one of the border areas. So from here, we know that he has offered him this. He said, I can go to one of the border areas. Where he will be treated like any other Muslim with the same rights and obligation. Or we send him to Yazid, the commander of the faithful. They were calling Yazid at the time, the commander of the faithful, Amir al muminin To offer his pledge of allegiance to him and resolve their differences. This approach will be satisfactory to you. It will be for the betterment of the community. So what they say, say Yazid is offering three options. First, either let me go back where I came from. Second, you have a jihad with Kafirs on the borders of Islamic government. Let me to go there and I'll fight them. That's number two. Number three, don't you want me to pledge the allegiance to Yazid? Let me go to Yazid. So that was the philosophy of Imam. That was the Sunnatullah wa la tajdil Sunnatullah tabdila. That was the Allah's plan. When Allah made sure that there are no excuses. When Allah made sure that Imam alayhi salam has given has given them all the all the offers, has offered them all the options. Not that he said no, either I do this or that. 
He didn't corner them. He gave them all the options. When Ubaidullah Allah ibn Ziyad read the letter, he said, this is a letter from someone who is sincere with the governor and is concerned about the welfare of his community. Subhanallah. Even Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad recognized the leadership of Imam. Recognized the politics of Imam. When Imam honestly and sincerely offers the mutually acceptable political outcome, he is ready to mitigate, to make an offer. Okay, you don't want this, let us do that. Not then, let us do that. But let us avoid the bloodshed of Muslims. Let us avoid the battle. That's what Imam should always do, and that's what he is doing. Yes, I accept his proposal, he says. And what happened here? He was, accept, he was ready to accept. Look, if he did accept that at that moment, that is the very moment when there would be no battle of Karbala. There would be no battle of Imam Hussein. But Shimir, La'anatullah alayhi, Shimir ibn Dijawshan rose up and said, will you accept this from someone who has halted nearby on your land? By Allah, if you allow him to leave your dominion without obtaining his allegiance, he will be he will be considered strong and powerful and you will be viewed as a weak and impotent. Do not give up your position, for it will be a sign of compromise. Rather, let them submit to your judgment, and then you can either punish them or forgive them, as you have full discretion. By God, I have been told that Hussein ibn Amar ibn Saad, Hussein and Omar ibn Saad sat between they sat between the military camps discussing a long night long. Dis discussing all night long. Ibn Ziyad responded, yes, your opinion is sound. So Ibn Ziyad was ready to accept that and say, okay, fair enough, Hussein. We'll let him go and discuss it with Yazid. Fine enough, well, we have our mission is fulfilled. But then the Shimr, la'natullah alayhi. Shimr stood up, no, don't show weakness. Why do you do that? No, 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 no. Just you have him now. Point him down. Just now. Don't give him any opportunities, you know? So he fired him up. And then Ibn Yad said, yeah, yeah, why would I do that? He said, look, listen, Omar and Saad, they are discussing something, so they are planning something. Be careful, blah, blah, blah. So he goes and accepts it. He said, no, I'm not giving him this opportunity. Here he makes the decision, and he writes another letter back to Omar ibn Saad. So he writes another letter, and what does the letter say? Tomorrow, Musa, I did not send you to Hussein to delay anything. To delay confrontation with him, to give him respite, to offer him, to offer him overtures, or peace and life. I did not send you for that. To intercede on his behalf with me. Take note that if Hussein and his followers submit to my authority and surrender, then send them to me in peace. However, if they refuse, then engage them to kill and to mutilate, for they are deserving of that. If Hussein is killed, let the horse trample back and forth on his chest. For he is a treacherous rebel who has divided the community. This will not injure him after death. This will not injure him after death. But I have sworn that I will do this if he is killed. So he has been sworn actually after the death of Imam Hussein to let the horses trample on his body, back and forth. That's what he has been sworn to do. So that was order. If you execute our order, then we will give you a reward befitting those 
who listen and obey. If you refuse, however, if you refuse, then give up our authority and army and hand over the command to Shiva. Hand over to Shiva. We have given him our mandate. Assalamu alaikum. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad called the Shimmer, gave him this letter, and sent him back to the camp of Omar ibn Sa'ad. He said, go with this letter to Omar ibn Sa'ad and instruct him to advise Hussein and his followers to submit to my authority. If they do so, send them to me in peace. If they do not, he should engage them in battle. If Omar ibn Sa'd does this, listen to him and obey. He is the boss and you will follow him. In the event he refuses to fight them, you are appointed as a commander of the people. Seize Omar Sever severe his head and dispatch it to me here. Take Omar, severe his head and he send his head back to me. So you become the head of the army. Uh, brothers, can you move forward please? Forward. When this missive was handed to Shimmer, he rose up with Abdullah ibn Abi Muhin, who said, May God make the governor prosperous. The sons of our sister are on the side of Hussein. They said, look, there's with the Hussein. We have the sons of our sister. If you deem it proper, write them a letter. And he writes him a letter of parley. He pardons them. Shimmer arrived with the letter of Umar ibn Sa'd. Shimmer handed over the letter of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad to Umar ibn Sa'd. When the letter read, he said, No, may God deprive you of your mercy and make unpleasant what you have brought to me. By God, I think that you influence Ibn Ziyad against accepting my proposal to him. So they know politically what's going on there. And as a result, have spoiled our efforts to correct this matter. Hussein will, be ne will never submit, for he is endowed with a proud spirit and self-esteem. Shimon asked him, Tell me what you plan to do. Will you execute the governor's order and do battle with this enemy? If not, withdraw and hand over the command of army to me. Omar replied, No. You will not benefit by exploiting this situation. So you are not going to become the boss of the army. I will execute the orders and you will be under my command. Shimmer, in turn, he approached the, the camp of Hussein and his followers and called out, Where are the sons of our sister, Abbas, Jafar, Abdullah, Uthman? So these are the brothers of Imam Hussein and their mother is from the clan of Kufans and he is their uncle. Ask him what he, they came out and asked him what do you want? He replied that he had come to offer them a guarantee of safety and security. He came with a problem. The youth replied, may God curse you and your guarantee. What sort of an uncle are you who offer us security while well, the son of the messenger of God has no guarantee, no, so, no safety? So they refuse this guarantee and refuse the safety. When Kuzma, Mawla of Abdullah ibn Abi Muhail arrived, he called out to them and said, this is a letter guaranteeing safety that your uncle has sent to you. The youth reply, convey our greetings to our uncle and tell him that we are in no need of your guarantee of safety. For the guarantee of God is better than guarantee of an immoral person.
Все еще? Is say here, no? No. No, okay. Okay, so that's, that's concludes of chapter 5 of this historical event. Now the chapter 6, which might take another few minutes, since Sayyid is not here, we read the chapter 6, which is Omar ibn Sa'd marched toward Imam Hussein. Because Imam Hussein was under impression that the deal is sorted. So he gave his offer, he said, no problem, I can go to the border, I can go back to Yazid, or I can go back home. So he told, once he gave them these options, and Omar sent the letter, he told he will come back and say, okay, worse come to worse, go to Yazid. That would be a worse option. So he did not expect them to come back. Wow. 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 Wow.